Hey, little guitar players out there that like things quieter or and or also with the cable into things and then they sound great. Um, I feel very privileged, first of all, to be friends with my good friends at that's the double thing, double friends. That's how good friends they are at two notes in Le France. And there's going to be quite a few Le's in here. Um, oh, that reminds me. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, they said, hey, Henning, uh, you'll be one of the first to showcase the new Captor X. What? Okay. Um, it kind of had to be done. Not this, but the Captor X had to be done. The Captor is a great box. It's a load box with a DI out, and then you can um, record that into your computer and send it into Wall of Sound or other IR loaders. Or it has a an, an analog uh, speaker simulation, which is okay, but it's not amazing. It's not like on IR level or not what you can achieve with the other two notes products or like a Boss Waller, two bang epics to X-Bang's banner, or a uh, ox or whatever. It's it's not on that level. It's okay, but it's also only 230, 250 bucks. And it gets you I'm quiet by minus 20 dB or completely silent. And um it's a great box. Combine that with the two notes cab M. And you have a an IR loader, which is really, really cool, and then you have a load box. Combine the two, you're at like 550 bucks or 600 bucks, something like whatever. Yeah, it's great. But it was only time, it was only about time, it was only a matter of time for them to actually combine them. And I thought, well, that makes total sense. You have the captor, you have the cab M, stick them together. They did so much more. And that's what I'm going to show you. There it is, in beautiful white, and I wish you could touch this thing. Um, it's like a rough, white-coated metal. It just feels ultra-high endy. It's very, very cool. But what we have to do here is actually, you know, give it the correct name with a Sharpie. And now I can't sell this anymore. <laughs> but there we go. It is Le Torpedo Captor X. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. So it is a reactive load box virtual cabinet and loader. Let's look at the front. Bam. Uh, output level, which is the master volume, not preset volume. We have a voicing, which I will demonstrate, which is notched in the middle so you know feel wise exactly where the middle is and that is great because that is doing uh, an adjustment overall in terms of voicing for all the presets so let's say you're on stage and it's a, and it's a little bit too boomy you can adjust with the voicing left or right uh, you can pretty much give the whole thing for all presets um, a little bit of an adjust for life and this is the live box now space or spice is uh, the whiteness of the reverb, because they have a new custom reverb in stereo. Um, input, low-high, phones, big plug, six presets, adju uh, uh, adjustable, um, con no, configurable, no, six presets um, can be picked right here. So on the back, which is tough to do, so go to, yeah, there we go. We have um, stereo XLR out, down here is MIDI input, and you'll see this in the uh, pictures I'm throwing in. Uh, USB uh, to connect your computer, and um, there's uh, speaker in and speaker through, and a little switch for attenuation in three different steps. It comes with a 12 volt power supply. What you need to know, what they don't tell you, what I tell you is. 12 volt is recommended. Please use 12 volt. If you have a DC7 or any other power supply that will do 12 volt, go for it. It doesn't eat up a shit ton of milliamps, um, but it comes with a 12 volt power supply included. It also comes included, way to go. Boss doesn't do this. Boss has these new mini MIDI plugs. And if you have one of those new Boss DD200, uh, MD200, uh, OD200, whatever, uh, you have to buy these for 12 volt. 50 extra. Now two notes includes the little right here. Mini plug to MIDI adapter. So you can 
actually put this on your amp, behind your amp, in a live situation, and switch between the presets with MIDI. That's killer. And I think there's even more presets available than just the six that you have on the front. Um, it, of course, connects to your computer, which is how I tweak the presets a little bit. Um, but that's the coolest thing. And my phone's over there. It connects with Bluetooth, Android, iOS, iPad, iPhone, any Android thing, Bluetooth, you're on stage and you want to, oh my god, I forgot to take the reverb down because it was so much fun at home, but I don't want this here. Connect to it via Bluetooth from right where you're standing and tweak your presets, move your mics around. That is amazing. Um, so what we can see on the front, this is all relatively, you know, self-explanatory, the voicing, the space for the whiteness of the stereo, but there's more. Uh, I can't show you the software because it's beta. So I don't want to show you an interface that then later will change, but three different stereo modes. And we're going to go into this, hold your horses, be a little bit patient. There will be sound demos and you will hear and see all of this. But three different stereo modes. Full stereo, which means, no, it's not miking in stereo. You can't say one mic left, one mic right. But the new custom reverb is stereo. And the custom reverb can be ginormous. Or you can take it down to just a little bit of a room to give you just that sound of the mics in a beautiful small studio room. It's all there with three knobs on the custom reverb. And that reverb is stereo, and the wideness of it can be determined uh, with that space knob. So either turn it all the way to the left or the right for full stereo widity. Um, but furthermore, there's the twin tracker. The twin tracker is doing kind of what the um, a TC Mimic a pedal is doing it's uh, allowing you to have the sound of a double track guitars but live now when you're playing it it feels a little bit weird because it, there's a delay on one side and it feels like there's a lot of latency but that's intended now how well does the twin tracker work i prepared a track for you and you will see in a second um, and those two things are stereo you can also, of course say uh, how wide the two guitars are and you know what for a band, for a trio, uh, this is absolutely killer because live, you can have these really wide, huge double track guitars. Why not take advantage of it? Two XLR outs, bang, to the front of house and you're good. Um, furthermore, there's a noise gate built in now, which I'm going to say it's not the noise gate for the blue sky with the long sustained notes. Uh, there isn't a hole, there isn't all these parameters, there's, you know, threshold and that's it. But to keep the noise away in between playing, especially when you're playing heavy shit, it does the job. So noise gate. Um, and oh, I was going to go into the modes. Full stereo. Okay. Then there's a dual mono where uh, you can say on one side, okay, give me that signal. On the other side, there's a separate uh, dry wet and there's a separate... EQ. So if you wanted to give the front of house two EQ'd options of that cab, you can. Pick which one you want, or actually, you know, a little bit more here, a little bit this, and maybe the room on the one side has a little bit of rumble, you know, do that. Great idea. And there's a dry wet, which means on one side you have the full speaker simulation, whereas on the other side, why am I yelling so much? I'm excited about this. Um, you have the full speaker simulation. On the other side, you have your amp pretty much... Uh, DI, what's coming out of your amp, and then circumventing everything and going straight into uh, your audio interface or the front of house. And then you can put something on later. You can put wall of sound on or any other IR loading software. So uh, if you want to just make sure that you track whatever you have in your torpedo software, but then have a backup to change it later with a different cab, those options are there. They thought of so much more than just adding a cab M to a captor. This is such a great product and I'm, I'm really excited about this. I think we went through the features. We got to check a couple of things, how the twin tracker works, go through a couple of sounds. I prepared a clip for that. It's about 10 minutes. Sit with me. And then of course, we got to see how well does the attenuator work. And for that, we have ears in the room. Check this shit out. There's a camera on it somewhere. Um, over there, we have the 3DO, uh, well, you know, room capture ear microphones, which is absolutely amazing. So for that part, I really beg you, there they are, top left, 
um, go and listen to that part with headphones because if we want to see how the room sound is for this beautiful Dixon aluminum cab and then attenuate it, there's no better way than this. I just picked them up from customs. It's absolutely phenomenal. But you have to have headphones on and then you're literally in the room with me and you can hear how much it attenuates much better than any other miking situation I've ever tried. So, but first, the twin tracker. Um, I played traditional doubling of two guitars uh, with a medium gain sound uh, and a boxy kind of a cab in a track and then played the same thing with one guitar, same cab with the twin tracker on and then you'll also hear it switch back and forth and well, that's what's coming now. With the twin tracker, I felt like, ah, it's not the same. And when I mix it, I was like, ah, I can hear a difference. When I switched back and forth, no, I cannot. I was completely lying to myself. It full on does the trick. Well done, two notes, four live situations, killer. Uh, to save time in the studio, realistically, it will do the job. It's fun to double track, okay? So if you have the time and it's your own studio, do it. But if, you know, Mime is money? Go for it. Yes, I said mime. Um, spinal Tap, look it up. Um, next, we're going to go through a shit ton of sounds uh, that I've, you know, I'm going to show you all the functions. You won't see the full software revealed. That is for, you know, later. So let me give you a quick overview over the new functions. We're not going to go into the miking and uh, that EQ, all the stuff that's on the left side of this new interface, because it's all the typical torpedo stuff that we know and love. So we're just going to go over some of the really cool new functions. And I'm not going to reveal all of the interface on the right, uh, because I have the beta version and uh, it wouldn't be fair to two notes to show you, you know, something unfinished. But I just revealed enough so that you can see what I'm turning on and off. So first of all, uh, the new reverb, which is an actual reverb that you can really can tailor, is amazing. Listen to this. That's like a little, you know, fendery kind of cap with the Tone King amp feeding it. can easily go in and change that. Beautiful. Um, and you actually have control on the actual unit with the space knob in how wide it is. Right now it's fully up. 
And if I dial it in on the actual unit, So that's what stereo. You can't move the mics in a stereo positioning, but you can move the reverb wider. And uh, you can definitely, let me get that size down here. You can turn the twin tracker on, which has uh, two parameters, entropy, which is how far apart are they time-wise, and balance. So. Right now the balance is on the right, a little bit more on the right, now it's a little bit more on the left. If you move it in the middle, guess what, it's equal. And with more entropy, feels like there's latency, but of course you're introducing a delay. So that's kind of cool, turning that off again. There's a noise gate, which we'll check with drive. And here's the enhancer, which is actually very nice. Turning that on. Right now, everything is at the bottom. I'm going 50-50 dry wet. You can also set that right here, so you can see well, you, you can't, uh, to bass. So more body. Just gets right here, gets fatter. Um, it is a compressor, who knows what. But I don't care, it's just cool. It's definitely compressing quite a bit. So thickness is the next parameter. See it like an EQ that's also compressing and doing magical stuff. And here's brilliance. Just more high mid than high, if you ask me. Keep putting it at 50%. I'm going to dial in body, a little bit of thickness, and all of a sudden you got this. Off. Very nicely done. Um, so let's go into the uh, different stereo modes. This is stereo where, again, the thing that is stereo is the reverb and the twin tracker. You can go into dual mono, which will introduce uh, two different levels for left and right, and a secondary EQ, a fully second EQ that you can uh, apply to the right side. So right now we only have the left side, or whatever side your headphones are on. I can dial in a different level for the right side. So we have very differently EQ'd signals on the left and the right. So as for the reverb, let's see. So it's du a dual mono reverb, I would assume. Um, and then there's a very cool dry wet where uh, on the left side, you have the fully uh, modeled speaker. And on the right side, you have your amp load boxed, but DI so that you can treat um, that later with a wall of sound or any other IR loader that you prefer. 
with individual level on the right. Let me get that down on the left. It's more apparent when we dial in drive. So from the front panel, I now change presets. You can see that things change. Do the presets remember the output mode? Yes, they do. That's interesting. Okay. So we're going to go dry wet. And then on the other side, we have the model sound. And so you can track both of them at the same time, completely separate. So that works really well. We're going to go to stereo again and skip through a couple of presets that they loaded up for me. Uh, this is this 112, which actually sounds pretty good for rock and roll. If I go to preset 2, we're going to go to 412. There's also a rudimentary tuner on the bottom right. Let's see how that works. Realistically, the tuner is not necessarily something that I would want to use hardcore. It's, uh, it's basic. I'm pretty sure this is just the beta version. Um, so... Let's see what we can do with the enhancer here. Next cap is twin tracks. Turn that off. So that's a little voxy um, cap, and we're gonna go and put the AC20 in there, which is voxy. a killer sound. Next preset, obviously there's hundreds of caps to choose from and to buy on their side, but we're just going to go through a couple. Twin tracks. Let's go to the Rev 100P. Turn the twin tracker back on. Twin tracker off, noise gate on. And they are silent. Maybe having the reverb off is a good idea on a sound like that. Maybe I turn the reverb back on and dial it in just a little bit for a little bit of room and space wide. I like that. So noise gate. Now 
Now let's get it off. So. When it's there, it's there. It cuts very abruptly. There isn't really a an attack or a hold or whatever. This is a noise gate for this kind of stuff. <laughs> So this is not your bluesy clean noise gate, this is a metal noise gate and it works well for that. Uh, we have more presets, oh, we already had that. And here's, uh, we're gonna go to, what else do we have? Um, let's go to the JCM 800. <laughs> Turning the noise gate on. Turning the enhancer on. That's all the new features in the Capture X. Back to me. And now that is two things. The voicing switch, which uh, the voicing thing, which I completely forgot to do in the demo that you just saw, and the room sound for the attenuator. Um, can't believe that's all in that box. Also, uh, if you look at the beautiful LEDs on the front, first of all, that's damn cool. And secondly, um, they have more function than just being pretty. Apparently, if you're driving it too hard with your amp, it will show up red. I don't know if I want to do that or if I even can here, because it takes, I don't know, 100 watts. It's only 8 ohms. It, you can run it in 4 and 16. They don't tell you that. But then things change with volume a little bit. But realistically, you're not gonna break it. Every amp usually has eight ohms, so go for the eight. If you really, you know, don't, 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 put, don't put a bass amp in there with 400 watts, okay? Don't do that, don't be an idiot. Look at the wattage. It, it should be fine with something else. I didn't say this and they don't guarantee it, but it can be, it's, it's always okay. That was badly played. So um, I'm recording this thing right. This I'm, I'm recording this thing right now. And let's look at in clean what the voicing gives us. That's the space. Why not have this all the way up?
So towards the left, it feels like it's very mid-focused and to the right, it feels like it's scooping it a little bit. Um, a very simple, effective switch, Nobby, uh, that can help you tweak all your presets to your live environment. Great. Well, actually, you want to hear this with drive, probably, because that's how you roll. <laughs> The thing is, it never sounds extremely horrible. I have some of these boxes where you can get great sounds, but a lot of the sounds are shit. I, I didn't experience that with the Captor X or the Look Captor X, because that's what mine's now called. I'm gonna take the speakers down here. That's gonna be scary. I'm gonna go clean. This is loud. This is the unattenuated Tone King Sky King now. And you're hearing the room sound. Please use headphones. Attenuation level. One. That was horrible. Attenuation level two. We're already at a level where it's totally fine. And that's very quiet. Practice level. actually less than practice level. This is even too quiet. Uh, this is for 100 watt amp if you want to actually practice at night. You know, doing your need noodly scales. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the dirty Shirley. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you one or two things that the Captor or the Look Captor X is and isn't. It is not the thing for the pedal board. It doesn't have a line in at all. And that is very likely very deliberate um, because it makes sense. That's what the Cab M is for. You want to go in with your pedals and have a power amp simulation uh, for a pedal board? It doesn't have a power amp simulation. This is the box for the amp. If you have an amp, that's what it's for. It takes an amp signal, there's no power amp simulation in the software, and uh, there is no line in at all. You have to go in with a speaker signal. That's what it's for, which is fine. The AUX is the same thing. It doesn't have power amp simulation, it doesn't have speaker, uh, it doesn't have um, a line in. And some of these, loads of these boxes, loads of these, get it? But load of the these boxes um, are like that. It is meant as your amp companion and it's amazing. It ticks all the boxes. The, the, the noise gate, the twin tracker, the amazing new reverb, the stereo out. It doesn't have digital out, which I usually bitch about. I bitch about it on the Boss Waza. It's 1290 bucks. The, the Look Captor X, it's not what it's called by the way, um, is not. It's under 600 euro, which is 
freaking ridiculous. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. It has features that the big ones don't. They have some features that it doesn't. So we're kind of there. And it's less than half the price. Okay? I don't think it's in any way inferior to some of the big boxes on the market. It's just great. For life, for home, for anything. It's a great box. And I'm not saying this because I'm getting paid for this video, which I am. I'm not saying this because I'm good friends with the company. Um, I think, and I'd have to lie to not say this, this is the best Two Nords product to hit the market to date. The software, the Bluetooth, all the features, the price, the weight, the design, everything about it, brilliant. Well done, Two Nodes. Go get your order in now, guys, because this thing is going to be sold out everywhere for a long time. Thanks, Leslie, for switching. Thanks, Two Nodes. Thanks for watching. And animals at the end. Mm -hmm.